Hello, thank you for joining me today on Live With a Purpose. Are you a servant of Christ Jesus? We ask the Lord uh, many times in our prayers to um, help us to serve and ask, where can we serve, Lord? How can we serve you? We have servants in the Bible. We have people that actually served in people's homes. So we're using an ancient term uh, in modern times. But actually, in many translations, we'll say servant when they should be saying slave. Nowadays, that has very negative connotations. But when we're talking about being a slave to our master and Lord Jesus Christ, that's a different situation because he is the sovereign and he is the creator. And his work is not burdensome and he is not a tyrant. And what we're saying is that we recognize where all of our gifts in our lives come from. He is not just our Lord, he is also our master. It's interesting that some of the New Testament writers, uh, as they were apostles, all of them, messengers, special messengers of the Lord Jesus Christ, um, would sometimes refer to themselves before anything else as... It, the English translations would say servant, and that's fine. But actually, the Greek word doulos uh, is really a slave. And you can say servant, but there are words for servant like deacon and deaconesses. That's a servant. But it sounds better if you say servant. Who wants to say, I don't want to say that I'm a slave of anyone? And even while we know that God is our creator, it still doesn't sound right. It sounds like we're giving up of ourselves to someone else. And that is what we're supposed to be doing. But we're giving ourselves up to the one who brought us here in the first place, who can take everything away, but he doesn't do so because he loves us. We have a number of uh, verses in the New Testament, three of them by Paul, uh, as we start out when he can easily say, and he does say that he's an apostle, but first, before he begins anything. In Romans 1.1, he says, Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus. In Philippians 1.1, he says, Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus. In Titus 1.1, 1, 1, he says, Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ. James 1.1 1, 1 says, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Simeon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, that's the second Peter 1.1. 1, 1. And in Jude 1, Jude 1.1.1, 1, 1, 1, it says, Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James. These were apostles. These were leaders of the church. And if you notice, Peter, who walked with Jesus during his ministry, who lived with Jesus, who betrayed Jesus and was restored and was a leader in the church, uh, at Jerusalem, calls himself, before anything, a servant in the English, or a slave, before he says anything else. And you keep reading, these will say that they're apostles and they were sent by God. Uh, James, the brother, the half-brother of Jesus, who did not believe in him when he was alive, but something happened after the resurrection. That's another point of reliability of the scriptures and belief in the resurrection that his own half-brother turned totally to the Lord Jesus, to his own brother. And he calls himself a slave of his Lord Jesus Christ. What about Jude? Jude, many times you didn't hear about Jude. He's also the half-brother of Jesus. And he calls himself a servant or a slave. They, they're saying something by starting off by calling themselves what they truly know in their hearts to be. They can use the big title of apostle. The apostle was uh, the first messenger of God. You had to listen to them. They were like prophets, but more, more so. They had a higher rank. And they could easily say that, and they do say that following, but they lower themselves first. They humble themselves first. They said, I know my place. I know what I'm really supposed to be doing. God easily could have chosen someone else. Just like in the prophets of the Old Testament, God easily could have chosen others 
like he tells Elijah. He says, I have 7,000 that have involved in the need to Baal. But it pleases God to use us for his glory, that he may manifest his goodness, that we may find meaning and purpose in serving our Lord, that we may situate ourselves where we need to in God, that we may not be too heady and, shall we say, too braggadocio, bragging about things and the things that we do. I would encourage you to reflect on the Lord Jesus Christ today and consider where you stand with the Lord, how you view yourself. Do you view yourself as so-and-so, fill in the blank? Or first and foremost, Lord, I am nothing without you. I serve you. I serve at your pleasure. I thank you for the privilege of service. Lord, you could have chosen anyone else, but you have saved me. Lord, you have opened my eyes. Lord, do the same for others. Thank you for joining me today on Live With a Purpose.